Hi, this is Johnny. We're coming with a Bible study today. We're do, actually doing stories, poems, and songs. And today I have a story from when we lived in Jacksonville, Florida, so I'll tell you about that. I had written about 50 songs probably in my lifetime, and one day a lady at the church came to me and said, I think you're selfish. And it really shocked me because most people liked me at the church. In fact, in all the churches where my husband was pastor, I was, I was liked all right. So I said, well, why do you say that? And she said, well, you've written all these beautiful songs and you never share them with us. You very seldom sing one of them. So I think you're being selfish with your songs. And she said, I think you should do a concert for us. So I thought, oh, what a good idea. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll do a concert then. So I planned a concert, lined up musicians to help, asked my family to help sing, and had it all lined up and we practiced and we did the concert and it was a great blessing. But before we did it, I kept thinking, I want the young people to come to this concert. I think they would like it if they would attend. So I asked a group of the young girls, I said, what would it take for you to, to come to my concert? And they said, well, write a rap and we'll come. So I said, okay, I'll write a rap. So I worked at, the, at Jacksonville Beach at one of the schools there in the office. And on the way to school the next morning, it took me about 30 minutes to get to my job each day. And on the way the next morning, I began to think about a rap. And the day before, school had just started, and I, had, well, I was in charge of writing a list of no-shows. Well, I had not heard the term no-shows, so I wasn't sure what they were talking about, but it didn't take me long to see that the students that had enrolled in school and then not, did not show up on the first day went on a no-show list. That put me to thinking, and I thought, man, I don't want to be on God's no-show list. I know that. So I wrote this little rap about no-show. This is it. When you register for school, they put your name on a roll. If you don't come the first day, they call you no-show. No-show, no-show, where did you go? You went your own way, and now you're a no-show. Noah built an ark and asked the people to come in, but they refused to listen and continued in their sins. Noah's family came, then God shut the door. Eight people in there when the rains began to pour. Noah counted heads and said, Where'd the people go? They all got drowned in Noah. They were no shows. No show, no show. Where'd the people go? They all got drowned because they were no shows. When Judgment Day comes and God pulls out the roll and he looks for your name, will you be a no show? Justin, here. Amanda, present. Leanne, here. Michelle, present. Mikey, here. Kira, present. Joel, here. Kylie, present. Ralph, Ralph, Ralph. Where did Ralph go? He didn't make it, Lord. He's a no-show. Don't you be a no-show. Get down on your knees. Ask the Lord to save you. Even say please. Then when he calls your name, you can say, I'm here, present, I made it. Have no fear when I stand before God, this one thing I know. He will welcome me right in. I won't be a no-show. No show, no show. I'm gonna go when he calls my name. I won't be a no show. Our scripture today is in, in is in Revelations chapter three and verse twenty. And it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Now, if you are not going to be a no-show on the day of judgment, if you're going to show up 
in Jesus' side or on Jesus' team, then you need to open that door. That Jesus is standing at your heart's door today and he's knocking. And he's saying, let me in. Let me come into your life. I can make your life so much better if you'll only open the door and let me in. So I'd like to ask you today, would you open the door to Jesus? Would you give him a chance to be Lord of your life? Because one day he's coming back to this earth and he will be king. King of kings and Lord of lords. And he will rule. This book, the Bible, in Revelations it says that he will rule with a rod of iron. And he said that he would let us rule with him. He's even said in the next verse after the one I read today that he would let us sit on his throne with him. So if you want to rule and reign with Jesus, open your heart today, open your life today, and ask him to come in. Let him be the king of your life. He'll direct you. He'll guide you. He'll show you things to come. And if you're wondering why we're having so many things happen now in these last days, this book will tell you. The book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, tells so many things that will happen in the last days before Jesus comes back to set up his kingdom. It's a serious thing. This book has lasted for years and years. People have tried to burn it. Kings and rulers have tried to destroy it, but it's never been destroyed. It is still the number one bestseller book in the world. So it would, it would be good for you to pay attention to it. I mean, I'm giving you good advice today that Jesus wants to come into your life and make it all better. Thanks for dropping by today. I appreciate that you've stopped and listened to my, watched my little video and listened to my little poem about the no-shows that I had to list at school. Don't be a no-show. God bless you, and I'll see you again next week on Turnaround Tuesday with another story and another poem. Bye.